this battle <laughs> and trying to scope out to see if we're going to get that Terrapagos lead from Eric. All right, so let's get into game one of round three, day one of the Honolulu World Championships here. Flavio on the top of your screen with an Incineroar, Calyrex, Shadow Rider lead. Compared to Eric Rios, there is the Terrapagos, the, the big, the crowning jewel of the latest DLC in Scarlet and Violet. This Grimmsnarl will not be able to be flinched by Incineroar thanks to its covert cloak held item. So this Grimmsnarl will have the opportunity now to either go straight for a foul play into that Calyrex Shadow Rider, maybe try and get some paralysis on that Pokemon as well, or any Pokemon that Flavio decides to pivot into that spot if it's not favorable for that Pokemon. Uh, Terrapicos will have to protect, unfortunately, this turn, but Eric is in a great position here to really threaten that Calyrex right off the bat and ensure that when the next turn happens, Terrapicos can start sneaking in those calm mines that it's going to want to seek out. Yeah, and this is one of those tough turns for Terrapicos. As you mentioned, Gabby, you don't want to get hit by a fake out. So if Flavio is prepared for potential protect on the other side, you can definitely try to punish Eric's uh, defensive decisions. There is the protect, so Terrapicos is not going to take any damage this turn. It is not, and that's going to be important as we do see the fake out try to go into that spot. Thunder Wave, though, will fail, and this is a unique thing about Dark-type Pokemon and a great opportunity for this Calyrex Shadow Rider to start going on the offense. Because it took on that Dark-typing thanks to the Terrastalization, priority moves will fail when used against it. Right, back in the uh, Sun and Moon, here we are in Alola, you could say, and that was an Alola change to uh, <laughs> make the Dark-types no longer be able to hit by Prankster attacks, and that's actually really huge because not only is Terrapagos naturally slower than Calyrex, but by now there is really no chance of speed control onto either of Flavio's now two dark types on the field. Exactly. This Grim Snarl has been rendered honestly a little bit useless in this board position as it can no longer use Thunder Wave. It can't use Reflect to necessarily negate the damage that will be happening this turn. So I think it's great that Eric Rios has swapped it out. I'm just curious how much damage is he going to take as a response on this Ogre Pond who came out on the field instead? Calyrex is just going to protect here on this turn for Flavio. So the Terrastalization used on turn one, but no damage here this turn. Terra Star Storm without Terrastalizing, crucial for Eric on this turn to maybe keep his opponent waiting, wondering which Pokemon will Terrastalize. And there's the parting shot from Flavio's and lowering Tropicos' special attack. Really crucial because it is uh, it hasn't even gotten the Combine boost set up yet, so it's going to be doing even less damage. It is, and that is something that fell out of favor for Terrapagos if we want to sort of look at the type of team that Eric's built here. Going into the North American International Championships, we saw every single Incineroar and their best friend, the other Incineroar, <laughs> running parting shot as a way to mitigate the attack on Terrapagos. And in this specific matchup, it's going to take Terrapagos so much time to get those Calm Minds in, so much time to start getting that damage on the field, that Flavio should be easily able to pivot with this Incineroar in and out of the field a couple of times and thanks to that parting shot drop the special attack of that Terrapagos. So he's going to be taking a bit of a slower approach on that side of the field which is totally fine when you look at the other Pokemon that Calyrex Shadow Rider it's already at plus two attack even if it decides to go for an Astro Barrage this turn to try and get a little damage on that Ogre Pond or a Pokemon that swaps in. Uh, it's still going to be whittling down the damage overall and starting to put that pressure on Eric and slowly, slowly progress this game forward. And really, whatever target goes into the uh, attacks go into the Trapago slot is in danger because it's either the boosted Calyrex attacks um, or, you know, uh, the potential or Shifu that would break through exactly. a protect if he went for that. It doesn't look like Eric protected on this turn. Astro Barrage is immune. Tropicos is a normal type for now, so uh, Ghost does not hit normal Pokemon there. So that's a minus one attack uh, from the Tropicos doing not even 30% it looked like to Calyrex Shadow Rider, who's not a bulky Pokemon at all. So that just shows how little damage this Tropicos can output right now. And there are the three surging strikes into Tropicos in that spot. Not doing too much damage, but it does at least break the Terror Shell. 
It does break the Terra Shell and potentially will put Terrapagos into range of a close combat after another turn of surging. For Flavio to change that attack at this point in time. When utilizing close combat on her Shifu, you immediately take defensive drops in return for using that attack. So what a lot of trainers do in this board position, especially with Focus Sasher Shifu, so you know it can't get KO'd in a single hit, you go a couple of turns with the surging strikes until you feel more confident about going for the big damage, and then you go for that KO. The Hearthflame Ogre Pond is going to swap out into Grim Snarl, so Eric still has not revealed his fourth Pokemon to Flavio here in game one. But now it's time for Eric Rios to finally terastalize in game one with this Terrapagos. It's had its special attack drop. It's had the Terra Shell drop, but now it's time to just click stellar damage. And this will be doing super effective damage to the opposing Calyrex Shadow Rider when it gets the opportunity to attack. There is the Astral Barrage into both of the Pokemon. But again, remember, same interactions as before with Terrapagos and Grimstar resist this the uh, Ash Barrage, so a really smart switch in for Eric. Here's the Stellar Star Storm into both. Calyrex hangs on, Urshifu in the red as well. Crits the Urshifu, wouldn't have been a knockout anyway, thanks to the Sash item. But then the Tropicals hangs on in the red. Close combat doesn't pick up the KO. And if you look at how much health is left on that Terrapagos, it was thanks to one turn <laughs> of Leftovers Recovery that allowed it to hold on through that close combat. Unfortunately, Terrapagos is naturally slower than the Urshifu on the opposing side of the field. So Eric cannot simply protect here and let Grimsnarl take the KO there. And honestly, Flavio is still in a very strong board position because of that lack of speed control to just stay on the offense. So I think Eric has to think which Pokemon is he okay with getting knocked out here? I don't think you let your opponent go for a double KO because if they do, that's going to give two more boosts to that Calyrex. Right, and it just gives Flavio so much more flexibility exactly. where you're stuck with two Pokemon. They can swap Incineroar in whenever they feel like it. Get rid of the defense drops on Urshifu as well. So Eric is in a really tough position right now. Has to swap this Terrapagos out for safety. Ogre Pond Hearthflame coming onto the field in that position. Grimmsnarl setting up Reflect. That's not going to help against this Calyrex Shadow Rider, but it will help against any physical attackers Flavio has on his field. There's the one hit KO, Ogre Pond, no focus sash, no chance of surviving that. So I love that play from Flavio because when the Grim Snarl was in the back of Eric's party, there was no opportunity to safely go for that Psychic because if the Grim Snarl swapped right. in, it's a dark type Pokemon, Psychic would do zero damage. But as soon as that, Terap or as soon as that Grim Snarl came out on the field, if Terrapagos stays on the field, you can target it down with the Psychic, get the KO, then the Urshifu will target down the other Pokemon, get that knockout. It's just a very great way to ensure that even if there is a switch, you have that damage, it's a one-hit KO, and now Eric is down to his final two Pokemon with the Raging Bolt. You do have to wonder why the Raging Bolt was kept a secret in the back for so long on Eric's side of the field. And it is a bulkier Pokemon here. It does hold the Assault Vest item. It has the ability to pick up an easy knockout here on either of these two Pokemon with a Thunderclap or even potentially Electroweb, a spread move to deal some damage. But I think Eric was trying to prioritize having that Thunderclap access for this board state where he can threaten a KO on either Pokemon. It's just, did you pick the one that's going to attack this turn? That's one way around Thunderclap, just like Sucker Punch. Your opponent has to attack this turn in order for Thunderclap to connect. So Flavio will swap that Urshifu out into Incineroar here. Calyrex protecting, safe, saving it again from a potential Thunderclap on this turn. What did he go for? That's going to be a Calm Mine, a free Calm Mine for Terrapagos to get a uh, boost to his special defense and special attack. Defense not mattering since it's such low HP, but but that special attack could matter. No, he goes for the Thunderbolt instead, so he calls the swap, but it doesn't even do half to Incineroar. It doesn't. Unfortunately, Raging Bolt, you may be used to seeing the super offensive variants that have gotten popular in the form with the knockout range 
from a Terra Starstorm, for example, but it, you can also have the flexibility to swap between an Electro Web, uh, maybe a Dragon Pulse over a Draco Meteor, so you're not dropping your special attack every turn. It's a great team pivot for Eric, preparing for a tournament like the World Championships, where that bulk and that flexibility is going to give you the opportunity to play to out such like this. The fake out from Incineroar means that Raging Bolt will not get an attack on this turn. Here oh. is the Psychic into Raging Bolt Assault Vest. It hangs on thanks to that held item with 16 HP. Calyrex knocks itself out from the Life Orb damage. So now this is a single target attack from, uh, from the Terrapagos with the Terra Star Storm into Incineroar on the other end with the special attack boost as well. That means Flavio is going to lose both of his Pokemon on this turn. A great prediction there from Eric, realizing that the Raging Bolt was the most logical target there for Flavio with the Fake Out, with the Psychic, because it did not have access to Protect. Just had that bulk to hold on through that attack, and the Terrapagos, it's a bit of a risky play. You could have been flinched there, which could have led to a very easy KO this turn. But taking the risk to go for that Calm Mind to ensure that Eric is still in the game. Unfortunately for Eric, we do get confirmation of Flavio's final Pokemon in that Rillaboom, who is going to have access to Fake Out this turn. So you do have to play this very, very carefully. But if your Raging Bolt can try and get a knockout here against the Urshifu, maybe your opponent just thinks you're going to be taking a big prediction like you did in that previous turn, that would then open it up for Eric to try and take this game. So it still is very much in Flavio's favor. Eric is just playing to as many outs here as he can, hoping that he'll find an opportunity where his opponent maybe slips up. Right, no need to forfeit here in game one, just to see what your opponent's tendencies are, see how they're playing this matchup. For now, Urshifu will detect. The Terra Star Storm means Tropicos is actually faster than the Rillaboom on this turn. That's plus one damage. It is spread, so that will be doing a little bit less than it did to that Incineroar last time. And the Rillaboom just tanks that like an absolute champion, responding with the Woodhammer for the KO. Yeah, and now that the Terrapagos has been knocked out here, while this Raging Bolt should be able to pick up the KO on this Urshifu pretty quickly, again, with something like Thunderclap, I do think that Rillaboom has the damage advantage here. Eh, actually, I don't know. That Dragon Pulse did a little bit more than I was anticipating to the Assault Vest Rillaboom on the opposing side of the field. It's possible with that grassy terrain recovery, it well, might be able to hold on. The issue, Raging Bolt doesn't have Protect to try to stall up uh, some, some health recovery from the grassy terrain, and it can only target down one of Flavio's two Pokemon. So if you Thunderclap the Urshifu slot, then that leaves Rillaboom to target this low health Raging Bolt. Well, that's exactly the play that Eric went for. So let's see, it's just going to be that Rillaboom and the Raging Bolt staring each other down. And a Wood Hammer here should seal the deal, picking up a KO on Raging Bolt and giving Flavio the victory in this game number one. Right, even if it is a resisted hit, that Wood Hammer with the grassy terrain boost and just the general power Rillaboom can bring to any matchup will be more than enough. So uh, it got, honestly, Gabby, it got closer than we thought it exactly. was after the first couple of turns. Eric was able to bring it back. And I think that's one of his best tendencies as a trainer is that no game is truly lost when Eric is playing he can always find his win conditions back in but kudos to Flavio for you know sticking with that advantage early on and, and pressing his offensive uh, damage output from the Calyrex. Yeah being able to get that nasty plot in pretty safely turn number one of this game number one meant that the psychics from this Shadow Rider Calyrex were always a threat and Eric really had to preserve the Terra Shell when you think about how this match played through so that it could hold on through the Urshifu's attacks and he couldn't necessarily respond immediately with the Terrastalization Terra Star Storm to get that damage down. And what we did see in this interaction yes. here is that Terrapagos is naturally faster than Flavio's Urshifu, which is not a thing that normally happens with yes. how these Pokemon are yes. trained. So that's massive news, one, for Eric to just know in general, but also now you probably don't need Thunderwave Grimmsnarl as much as you thought you did. I don't think so. I mean, if you look at the Grimmsnarl in particular, it was great to be there as a dark type Pokemon to soak up damage from right. the Psychic and the Astro Barrage on the opposing side of the field. 
But you didn't do any damage in return. You didn't get that Thunder Wave to connect. You didn't get any sort of foul play or taunt action in on this game. I think that if you are making an adjustment in this game number two, leaving the Grimmsnarl behind is a very logical adjustment to make. You also have access to your own Urshifu Rapid Strike, which could come in handy here with the multiple hits, be able to threaten some bigger damage on that slower Urshifu, like we just said, break the focus action and one attack and then a Terra Star Storm to pick up the KO might be a very easy way for Eric to make a natural pivot in how he approaches this game too. Yeah, even if Eric lost game one, he still gained some valuable information there now knowing Tropicos naturally faster than Shifu, faster than the Rillaboom on the opposing side. So Flavio would have to choose Grassy Glide to try to get it uh, if it's low HP. So definitely information gained for Eric in that loss. We'll see if he can turn it around in game two or if Flavio will start his day at 3-0. and Incineroar, Calyrex, Shadow Rider for Flavio and Tropicos Grimmsnarl yet again for Eric. Yeah, so same leads on both sides of the field and the presence of the Grimmsnarl from Eric, I think putting a lot of pressure on Flavio to click that Terrastalization again, turn number one um, in this game number two. I wonder if we see Eric just repeat the same play we saw from game number one where you go for the Thunder Wave, you go for the Calm Mind and hope for the best. Uh, and then if your opponent doesn't terastalize for some reason, you are able to connect that form of speed control and then find another way to give yourself that advantage. I think having Grimmsnarl as a Pokemon on the board is a fantastic position in this matchup in particular. I'm just wondering if Eric is going to be able to utilize it a bit better this game. Right, you think this time around, one, you only have Reflect, you don't have Light Screen, so that's really uh, hindering you in this matchup against Flavio's uh, Shadow Rider as a special attacker that you can't mitigate that damage. You're not necessarily worried about Incineroar's physical damage or uh -huh. anything like that. Uh, so this Grim Style deciding, Eric decides, let's, let's save it for later on where maybe I can get some value out of a Thunder Wave or a Foul Play later on in the match. But Flavio does commit to Terrastalizing two game one, or two turn ones in a row, I should say, in this set. There is the Terra dark anticipating a potential thunder wave into that slot but that's not what's going to happen he will be able to set up the nasty plot boosting cower special attack by two stages tropicos with the calm mind on this turn boosting his special attack and special defense by one stage each this very easily could have that special attack lowered though from the party shot but the party shot goes into the urshifu switch in instead so eric tropicos is still boosted it's still boosted, and that Urshifu was able to last the entire turn with its Focus Sash intact. Normally, when you have a Pokemon with a Focus Sash in the back of your party, you don't want to switch that Pokemon onto the field, knowing that if it takes any damage in the process, that item is no longer of use. But Eric made a fantastic read there, anticipating the parting shot over the fake out on that Incineroar, maybe thinking that there would be a protect from his own Terrapagos in the process, so that Urshifu, yes, it has been intimidated essentially with its attack down one stage, but it's able to deal damage via critical hits, which ignore any of those stat changes. Right, and now that Fabio has committed his terrestrialization onto Calyrex yet again, if Eric does terrestrialize his Terrapagos, that would be doing super effective stellar damage into the other slot. So Flavio is set up with his offense, but how do you handle uh, these two Pokemon defensively? It's a very tough position to be in defensively because it comes down to who can hit harder and who can hit faster. And unfortunately for Flavio, we have got, we had, did see that in game number one where the Terrapagos is faster than that opposing Urshifu. I don't think you necessarily are going to be able to take it out here as we didn't see Eric double into that Pokemon to break the sash and then deal damage. But still, this is going to be an easy two hit knockout on that Urshifu. Yeah, Urshifu brought down to the focus sash, so just one HP for remaining on Flavio's end there. Close combat in response though from Flavio will bring Eric's Urshifu down pretty low. And remember it was hit with the parting shot on the last turn, so it's not gonna do a lot of damage. But the oh. unseen fist into the protect. You protect in front of Urshifu, but because of the parting shot, Calyrex hangs on. And yet another slower Urshifu as well than that Terrapico. So both these trainers, I think, taking a interesting approach here to how they prepare these Pokemon for the World Championships, but a great play there by Eric Rios, recognizing that he just has to connect an attack with that opposing Calyrex for the knockout. 
And Calyrex didn't opt to attack. It went for that protect, just opening up that door. And Flavio Zershifu does not have Aqua Jet. It has Taunt in that fourth slot compared to Eric's with the Aqua Jet. So you'd have a priority attack yep. into this super low HP Calyrex Shadow Rider. All you have to do here is Aqua Jet the opposing Calyrex Shadow Rider and go for another Terra Star Storm. And you are slowly racking up that momentum to get back into this game. Rillaboom will swap into the field, into that Urshifu slot. So Flavio has revealed all four of his Pokemon here in game two, but wants to preserve the Urshifu for later. There's the Aqua Jet, Calyrex is down, Flavio's Terra is down, and game two is off to a much better start for Eric. It is, and now that Terrapagos able to connect a Terra Star Storm, single target damage against the Rillaboom. It is holding an Assault Vest, so it's not gonna do quite the dramatic knockout that uh, we've been seeing so far in these games, but still a very awesome board position for Eric to find himself in. And honestly, now the Urshifu's kind of done its job, got the Aqua Jet KO on Calyrex, uh, let, it, let the Urshifu get any amount of damage that it can, but really, Incineroar, Urshifu, Rillaboom, sounds like a perfect reflect angle to me. <laughs> it really is a great opportunity. A lot of times Grimmsnarl players will try and preserve reflect as Urshifu Shifu with those critical hits is able to just hit right through them. Uh, but still, if your final Pokemon on the opposing side of the field are the combination of Incineroar and Rillaboom, your opponent's going to be looking to Wood Hammers over like Grassy Glide to deal that bigger damage to try and make up that lost momentum. And I think the combination of a Terra Star Storm and Wood Hammer recoil damage at this point in time probably would knock out that Rillaboom. So uh, Flavio does have a couple of options he can try and pursue here, but unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna be seeing a fake out to break the Terra Shell which means there's probably an attack coming in next from that Urshifu. Yeah, here's the Aqua Jet. One HP is all you need to take out Flavio's Urshifu on the other end. So Eric's Urshifu, even with the drops, has put in so much work here in this game too, claiming two KOs with those Aqua Jets. Tropicos did not take any uh, attack that turn thanks to the fake out. And remember, Eric hasn't even terrestrialized yet. He hasn't terrestrialized and he just got the Terra Shell ability back thanks to the combination <laughs> right. of the lefties terrain, and grassy yeah. terrain recovery. So yeah, a fantastic Fantastic game played here by Eric. Very, very well played. Well, there may still be a couple of turns here to wrap things up on Flavio's side of the field, I think that this Terrapagos is in a fantastic position to get those knockouts and bring us into game three. Yeah, I mean, Terra Shell, it's one of those, it's, uh, it's you know, you think about some other Pokemon like uh, Multi-Scale Dragonite or uh, even Lunala with its uh, with its special ability when it's at full HP taking less damage. The Terra Shell is even better because it doesn't just take less damage, it takes resisted damage while at full HP. So the battle is canceled. Terrapagos doesn't, doesn't even take any damage in game two and we're gonna go to a game three. What a fantastic pivot from Eric there as well. You know, looking back at game number one, we saw him lead that, uh, we saw him lead the Grimmsnarl and the Terrapagos, and I was assuming a more of a defensive position where you would want to try to make use of that Grimmsnarl, get those uh, Thunder Waves to connect, uh, maybe set up a Reflect for later on in the game. But instead, we saw him utilize that same strategy in this game number two to go ahead on the offensive, switch out that, that Grimmsnarl, force the Terrastalization, and really start the momentum going in his favor. When you're playing a Terrapagos team, you want to get Pokemon into the low HP so that all Terrapagos has to do at any point in time is threaten the Terrastalization and then threaten the double target Terra Star Storm. And that's exactly what we saw Eric pilot to throughout this game too. A great adjustment. Yeah, and I think now that Flavio's the one that has to make an adjustment going into game three, obviously the, the first spot you can look at is the just kind of automatic turn one Terra that he's used in both of these games. Maybe that's a position where uh, if Flavio wants to preserve his Cower X Shadow Rider for later, maybe leading something else, or maybe just not even committing, especially if Urshifu's not on the field, no one's seen Fist, like maybe just go for a simple protect on turn <laughs> one, see what Eric is up to. Yeah, I, I think you can. The value though for Calyrex Shadow Rider in particular 
is that if you are able to sneak in that nasty plot on turn one, on turn two, it just puts so much board pressure on that particular Pokemon. It really forces your opponent to always have an answer to it. And normally, if you're playing a matchup, maybe it's a Kyogre or a Maridon or a Calyrex Ice Rider instead of the normal type Terrapagos, yeah. <laughs> that pressure is enough to really focus, force your opponent to have tunnel vision on that Pokemon and recognize the threat. Eric benefiting from the fact that he's picked the normal type uh, legendary Pokemon from this generation, that's not really as oppressive to him. And we've seen him utilize that very, very well throughout these two games. Right, and even the uh, Grimstar all immune to Psychic and resists Astro Barrage. So you can Nasty Plot as, all, as much as you want with these two Pokemon on the field. Calyrex is not getting as much value out of it. So Flavio will make an adjustment here in game two, bringing his own Ogre Pond Hearth Flame, which Gabby just so happens to have Brick Break. It does have Brick Break, but I don't think that's necessarily a play you go for on turn number one here, unless you're feel feeling very confident in your predictions. I have a feeling that this Ogre Pond is there more so to protect the Calyrex Shadow Rider without forcing it to terastalize in front of this Grimmsnarl. You will be redirecting any sort of taunts, any sort of thunder waves to that Pokemon in particular, but turn one, you can follow me, nasty plot. Turn two, then you can go on the offense. He didn't even that's click. That's how it goes. He Ogre didn't. Pond did not click follow me on that turn. So that Thunder Wave naturally went in to Ogre Pond slot there. Potentially Eric anticipating a follow me or a Terra Dark out of Calyrex as we've seen two games in a row. So Flavio making an adjustment and getting rewarded for it. No terrestrialization. Still gets the boost to his special attack. Terrapagos will be able to get the Calm Mind boost. Here's the Ivy Cudgel into Terrapagos with the crit, bringing it down under half HP. And now we have a very different game on the field for Eric as that Terrapagos is within KO range from a Psychic and the only Dark type Pokemon that Eric has access to is already on the field next to it. So Flavio can very easily threaten a KO on that Terrapagos this turn or the next turn if we see Eric go for a Protect. You have to think if he is going to protect that Terrapagos, then what's the opening he can set up for himself this turn? I think his best opportunity here is to try to either paralyze that Calyrex Shadow Rider or get some big damage down with it on foul play, assuming it's not going to terrestrialize. So looking at how Eric is approaching this turn, he's making that call that there will not be terrestrialization on Flavio's side of the field, and we'll have to see if it's going to pay off. Yeah, this is a really crucial turn for Eric as there's so many factors going against him. One, you have access to follow me on the other end so it can redirect attacks away. There's a potential terrestrialization into a dark type. That would also be a really big deal, but Eric will lock in the stellar Terra for Terrapagos here in game three. Astro Barrage does not affect Terrapagos goes but this is plus two special attack into the grim snarl bringing it down under half hp that life orb damage is so strong even when resisted terra star storm into both of flavio's pokemon neither of them are terrestrialized though so it will not do super effective damage and look how little it did but the foul play is four times super effective so flavio's calyrex is down he's gonna have to terrestrialize something else in game three that was a very great play there from Eric. Again, correctly calling that there would be no ter terrestrialization on that Calyrex Shadow Rider. Does have to trade your own Grim Snarl for that. But and no reflect anymore. And no reflect anymore, but you got the paralysis onto that Ogre Pond, so it's now slower than the Terrapagos, slower than any of the other Pokemon you may bring to this game. And you know that if you're looking at your notes from the previous games, there's a high likelihood that Flavio's final two Pokemon are going to be that Rillaboom and Incineroar once again. And I think we're, we're seeing another uh, board situation where Eric just has more offensive power. We do see the Urshifu for Flavio. And they both have the Focus Sash and in they this spot. So it's going to take multiple hits. There's nothing really on Flavio's end that can super effectively hit Eric's Urshifu right now to bring it down to the Sash. And remember, we saw last time around, if it comes to low HP, only Eric has Aqua Jet. Only Eric has Aqua Jet. I think as well, though, Flavio's Urshifu has the stellar Terra type, and that could be a very interesting option for him here to try and regain some of the offense he lost when that Shadow Rider was knocked out. As long as you go for that stellar, stellar terrestrialization, it's going to boost up the power of your Surging Strikes once, your Close Combat once, 
and that might be enough to win him the game. He just has to be very careful about how he approaches these turns. Ogre Palm breaks through to Paralysis, so it does get Follow Me to redirect attacks away. Not going to redirect the spread attack from Trap Goats, obviously, but Ogre Palm does hang on in the red, meaning the Zershifu's hit will go into the other slot. Flavio KOs Eric's Terrapagos to gladly taking those defense drops to get rid of Eric's most important Pokemon. Now all that's left on this turn for Eric is the Urshifu targeting down this low HP. Ogre Pond on the other hand, the close combat takes it out, but you will get those defense drops on the other side. So a really strong turn for Flavio, keeping his Urshifu's Focus Sash intact. Keeping the Urshifu's Focus Sash intact. Oh, no, actually with the, uh, the spread attack, excuse me, sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I got so excited about Urshifu that he survived the turn. That's okay, that's okay. Eric's Rio, Eric Rios's Urshifu, though, does still have that Sash right, intact, right, right, so. Yeah. Uh, you just got to make sure you're targeting down the right side of the field. <laughs> we get final confirmation of the last two Pokemon for both Flavio and Eric. It's going to be Rillaboom staring down the opposing Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. And that Ogre Pond Hearth Flame is in a great spot after this first turn passes when there's no opportunities for fake out uh, to go on the offense against the Rillaboom and clean up this game for Eric. He does have to worry about the Urshifu for this next turn, but given that it's at such low health, I think all you have to do here is target it down with two attacks and you're guaranteed to pick up the KO there. The big question is, can Ogre Pond hold on through a surging strikes from the opposing Urshifu, probably to Rast Stellar Terra as well? And a lot of these Ogre Pond Hearth Flames coming into the World Championships have been a bit on the bulkier side. It's possible that it's been trained to survive this. Right, especially when you have access to follow me, you want to be able to take, if you want to redirect hits your direction, you want to be able to take as many hits as possible. But Flavio going to match the Stellar Terra from Eric, say, hey, great strategy, you might as well Stellar Terrestrialize my Urshifu Rapid Strike, now getting a boost to all of its attacks one time while there is the Stellar damage there. So close combat on Urshifu, he's not even going to get the chance to attack because Eric's Urshifu goes first here with the knockout from close combat. Flavio down uh, with the Rillaboom left on his end. It's a 1v2 situation. What can Flavio do in this matchup? He could go for Grassy Glide into the opposing Urshifu. Unfortunately, though, with the Focus Sash, it will be able right. to hold on through that attack. Uh, I think what you would have to do here is try and find a KO onto the Ogre Pond first and just hope that it works out. But instead, Eric able to turn the game around and win game number three of his round of three here.